so-called economically inactive, although many of the inactive are very active in uh, important uh, uh, ways like uh, volunteer uh, work. Um, it is outside tonight's subject, but I would like to mention it anyway because it is related to uh, this subject, that um, we need, in relation to uh, the demographic questions, also to adjust to uh, a much lower energy consumption per capita. Um, uh, the focus is not energy of this, uh, uh, this, this lecture, but um, as everything uh, ultimately um, is based on many forms of energy, uh, even uh, money is in a way a condensed form of uh, uh, effort and energy, uh, the crucial question to a more balanced um, global society in the future is um, a much higher energy efficiency. Uh, my view increasingly is that uh, we can maintain uh, our high level of um, lifestyle with about half the energy consumption we are used to. Uh, it goes too far to um, give examples how this might be possible. Uh, we tend to focus uh, on, a, on our energy discussion uh, on alternative sources of energy, uh, on solving the climate change uh, risks by um, carbon dioxide uh, storage underground by new technologies, um, by <clears throat> new forms of energy like nuclear energy. Uh, when you look at all this skeptically, none of these really offers solutions of the size we need in relation to the world uh, population uh, development. Uh, most of these uh, technologies that we count on, most of these economic solutions that we count on are entirely unproven and uh, are still in the realm of uh, wishful thinking. And I think it is very urgent uh, to um, say this because uh, there is a lot of fake policy in this area. We think that the very serious question of um, climate change and carbon dioxide uh, emissions can be tackled uh, by um, uh, cutting um, emissions through selling emission rights. Actually, none of this works up till now. None of this has led to any uh, actual reduction of carbon dioxide uh, emission. And I think uh, many governments and international organizations have led us on the wrong path. There is no escape um, from uh, a reduction in energy consumption. It seems entirely unrelated to the subject of your speech, but at the same time it is very much related because a combination of energy depletion and a vast increase in world population uh, is a formula for disaster and that we should avoid. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, first of all, Hoover, for, your, uh, for this contribution and especially for broadening the approach. Uh, Professor Cleland brought already into the discussion the line of uh, development policies, uh, uh, technical formation, uh, professional formation, for example, and, uh, the pol and the population issues. You went even further, and indeed I can only underscore that just the figure that five million youngsters each year in the broader Middle East region, Mediterranean, Maghreb region, broader Middle East region are offering themselves for the job market and only a very small part of them gets a job. And what the consequences that is for the insecurity dimension you post, that is in itself already very clear. Uh, uh, 
ladies and gentlemen, the floor is open for discussion. It has such presents such a richness of uh, of thesis and analysis that uh, I would not uh, like to uh, well to 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 concentrate the discussion on certain issues. Please, I think many of you have certain questions, have certain observations. Mr. Baneke, please. Afterwards, I cannot remember all your names. Is Frans uh, Baneke, you have the floor. Uh. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Taylor, for your very clear story. Thank you, Doris, for your reaction to that. My question is for Professor Taylor. My name is Frans Baneke from the World Population Foundation. And um, it's a question about research and your advice and thoughts about research. Um, well, as you said, you said it's difficult to draw the attention of authorities to this problem because uh, as, as long as you speak about however right it is, etc., right stuff, those who govern the purpose, you know, they're looking for concrete costs and benefits. So my question is, my, my organization is involved in part of family planning, sexuality education, etc., and we would be very much helped by a very clear cost-benefit analysis, economic cost-benefit analysis of say, well. If you now invest so much, and prevention is usually a lot more cost efficient than all the rest, and, and some concrete research saying investing so much in family planning or sexuality education will, you know, later on save so much or deliver so much money. And I think, are you aware of such research and do you have ideas for such research? That's my question. Yes, it's, um, the research has been done, uh, funded by the American government, done by the Futures Group, um, in which they took the level of unmet need, worked out how much it would cost to meet that unmet need of contraception, it's, it's so many dollars per woman year protected, and then estimated the savings um, that would accrue from the reduced number of children, unwanted children, um, in terms of immunization, obstetric services, uh, clean water, impregnated bed nets, and further down the line, reduced um, primary school costs. And the benefit cost ratio is typically, for 17 African countries, is typically three or four to one. In other words, you spend $1,000 on meeting unmet need for family planning, you save on the other MDG indicators three to 4,000. It, and it's pretty good research, so you don't have to do it. It should be, yes. Please, you have to My name is Khalid Chaudhary. Professor Cleland, no argument about your finding, okay, that key to development, increasing and investing in human capital, definitely. But the second thing, where I cannot agree with you, when you, when you were talking about, let's say, solving the problem of Europe, aging, and the deficiency of uh, the working force, when you said, okay, it needs to be, I mean, doubled or uh, tripled, I mean. So then I was thinking about the uh, present European governments, they are adopting a policy to attract more and more knowledge migrants. I mean, highly educated people from the developing countries. So when you are talking about to solving a problem in Europe, yet then you are creating a problem somewhere else that you are asking, I mean, to get a uh, number of uh, migrants, I mean, in mm -hmm. this country. Mm -hmm. If you say, if you are willing to say that, okay, not highly educated, but let, let it be, I mean, anyone whosoever want to come, I mean, uh, open the doors. Then the second thing uh, which I wanted to say about age, pension age. Our society, European society, our Western Europe, is already facing, I mean, uh, depression and stress and especially I mean present financial uh, circumstances are going to create a havoc I mean many more are going to lose job y young uh, job seekers they are not uh, able to find jobs and we are talking about to provide jobs I mean or to let it be I mean uh, uh, let the age of the pension I mean to be increased so that is not fair to those people who, are, who have reached or who are going to reach uh, at the age of 